So hello everyone. We'll we'll be back with uh, Gautier Willy. I think is is this the pronouns? Uh, yeah. So okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, uh, and the next talk is Maritime Big Data Analysis with uh, Orlas with, uh, with uh, Gautier Willy. Gautier is a data scientist uh, from the Department of the Data Science of the Jizaya, I think is this, uh, Willy can say more the, the, than I. So, uh, Gautier, this stage is yours. Uh, we will have uh, uh, all the time, uh, 20, uh, 20 minutes, okay? Okay. So, are you sharing share my screen? Okay. okay. Thank you. Then hello everyone. Um, I would like to thank the uh, Phosphorgy organizer for and all the speakers for this nice presentation. Uh, I'm Willy Gauthier. I'm data scientist for Gizaya, and we are a small company specialized in uh, geospatial, uh, based in Toulouse in south of France. Uh, we develop Arlas. It's an open source solution for big geospatial data analysis. So, um, as you know, the maritime industry uh, has become a major part of uh, globalization and 90% uh, of the transportation of good is globally carried out by more than uh, 80,000 uh, service vessels. Uh, then political and economical actors are, are meeting challenges regarding uh, shipping and uh, and people transport and uh, today we're going to see together how, how alas can help for maritime big data analysis by exploiting the, the vessel automatic identification system then we exploit uh, automatic identifi identification system it's ais um, a safety system which provides information about the vessel state uh, but we will see that uh, this data contains some imperfections uh, then we'll see how uh, we face these challenges to to clean the data and to infer trajectories with some algorithms that we provide as an open source library that's alas programml and uh, finally, we will see how complex vessel behaviors ca can be detected with machine learning models and how ALAS can help in uh, this model creation process. Then first, uh, the automatic identification system, it's a safety system that record and broadcast uh, all the vessel's locations. Uh, this message uh, they are received by other vessels and it helps them to, to avoid collision and uh, particularly when the visibility is low. And it also contains information about uh, the vessel dynamics and uh, characteristics. All the vessels about uh, a certain size uh, have to be equipped and it results in more than half billion IS message emitted worldwide every day. These message, uh, messages are collected by ground antenna and satellites and can be a great source of information about the maritime traffic. Uh, however, it requires adapted tools to, to handle such amount of data. Mm, the Danish Maritime Authority provides IES data uh, received around the Danish coast uh, that we will use to, to illustrate uh, this maritime data analysis. Um, actually, we want to extract uh, maritime intelligence from this cloud of points. Um, however, uh, as often with real-world data, IES records are sometimes imperfection. Uh, on this topic, I really recommend you uh, a nice paper of Anita Grasser uh, that explains uh, the different kinds of problems with the uh, continuous data and it provides a methodology to, to identify these problems. Um, but today we'll uh, focus on some of them, uh, like uh, missing information, uh, like gaps uh, or missing fields, the imprecision and accuracy problem, uh, such as outlier uh, in, in location, uh, and also consistency problem, uh, such as sampling heterogeneity of the, of the records. Um, and uh, finally, raw IS data it doesn't give uh, any information about the vessel real origin and neither reliable destination and nor uh, about uh, its, its traveling time. 
then and the volumetry of the data it requires adapted tool to to handle it uh, to see clearer, clearer about uh, among these numerous vessel locations, uh, we, we use Alas Exploration. It's an open source uh, geoanalytics software uh, that allows to, to visualize and explore the data. Uh, it results in an interactive map uh, when we can navigate within the data and explore it different components. Then we, ca we can see the, the spatial distribution uh, and we can see uh, the distribution of other components uh, such as the ship type and we can uh, you we can apply filter selection uh, to, to explore the data. Uh, it helps to, to better under understand the IIS data and, uh, and its challenges. Um, here we can observe the, the spatial distribution and uh, we distinguish the, the main uh, vessel fluxes. Um, if we zoom a bit, we can observe the real boat location and here colored by, by the vessel type and uh, we can quickly distinguish different behaviors. Um, but there are some imperfections uh, within this data, such as missing or er erroneous information. Uh, by exploiting, by exploring the AES record, we we observe that some of the attributes, like the, the ta its type or name, are, are not available in all messages, and uh, it can result in data gaps if we if we select these values. Uh, here, for example, uh, for the same vessel, it has sometimes uh, its uh, type uh, field uh, as tanker but sometimes as undefined, then if we select all the tanker, we will miss, uh, we will miss many records. And moreover, the, the time between consecutive uh, records um, is not always uh, regular, and uh, there are some gaps, uh, there are some vessels emitting uh, every 30 or 10 seconds, but it can be really different, and in it can result in a misinterpretation of uh, the vessel densities, and uh, sometimes uh, this um, it's it's oversampled for the for the analysis need to have the location every ten seconds, for example. Um, we we also sometimes observe large uh, jump in GPS location uh, that should not be considered as um, possible vessel motion. Uh, when we look at the spatial distribution uh, of the of the vessel around Denmark, uh, we can see uh, uh, we can observe out of range location, uh, which can sometimes be even inland. Um, for a part and if we see a particular vessel, uh, its records are, are quite, quite continuously, uh, but we but one of them is uh, very far far away from the other, and it looks like uh, uh, a wrong a wrong location. Um, in order to, to solve these problems and to extract uh, real maritime intelligence from the raw data points, we, we process the record to, to clean the observations and to infer trajectories. And we apply algorithms that we provide as an open source library, uh, Arlas ProCamel. The goal of this algorithm is to transform the punctual vessel records um, into valuable trajectories with their origin and destination, their stops, and uh, also the traveling time, uh, the distance, and, uh, and even other indicators. Um, Alas ProCamel library contains um, different modular algorithms, such as uh, outlier removal or resampling, uh, that we can combine to, to create a processing pipeline. Um, this framework is uh, developed in uh, in Scala and uh, and it's based on our Apache Spark framework to be to be fully distributed. And each block that you can see uh, transforms the input into an output, and we we call it a transformer. And uh, those transformers are here applied to vessels, but it can be applied to any moving object data. Then you simply has to 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 import the dependency and, and use uh, use the different function. You can find uh, the, the project on GitHub. Um, for example, in order to deal with, uh, with the outlier uh, within geolocation, we apply an outlier de detection filter inspired from the Ampel filter, and it computes the Z GPS uh, speed median over sliding windows, and it identifies unrealistic move. Then the, this uh, wrong location are, are corrected. Um, for example, the suspicious location we, we saw before is filtered and uh, it's removed from the vessel track. 
Um, we have seen that the time between two observations of the same object can be very heterogeneous in some cases. And actually, we introduced the notion of fragment to represent the information by, by a time interval um, for a given object. Then a fragment, it corresponds to the vessel be behavior between two observations. Uh, it has a geometry representing the travel of the vessel, um, its uh, dynamics and such as speed or heading and even the, the vessel information. Um, the basic fra fragments are straight line between two uh, raw observation, but uh, we can but we can also concatenate it and uh, to create uh, a single longer fragment. And uh, to if we focus on the on the um, on the time uh, between observation distribution, um, we can uh, we can say that we use the fragment concatenation mechanism to harmonize uh, the fragments and uh, to regroup a block of uh, three minutes, for example. Then now instead of having a very varying uh, variating observation, uh, we create uh, new fragments of uh, three minutes. And uh, this aggregation uh, can be done without losing special information um, if the concatenation uh, is uh, the geometry has all the small line strings. Uh, but we can also simplify geometries. And then uh, here we, we can see in red dot uh, the edges of the three minute fragment. Uh, in white dot, you, you have the raw, raw location records and the geometry fit uh, stored for, for the trajectory. Um, is uh, it fits uh, the real geometry and it's much much uh, smaller uh, for 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 the fragment. Uh, then the sampling harmonization it um, it compresses a lot the information and it also makes the data distribution less sensitive to to sampling variation between between different objects. Um, if we want to identify the trajectories, the first step is to, to analyze, uh, to detect whether the, the boat is, is still or moving. Then to do so, we use the uh, hidden Markov models to, based on vessel speed uh, to identify the, the, vessel motor, the vessel mobility. And HMM models are robust to noise and uh, in vessel speed to avoid switching between uh, steel and move uh, because of uh, wrong measurement. Uh, here we can see that uh, that the model is quite robust. Uh, if there is there are some wrong measurement, it's not detected uh, as stop, for example. Um, and thanks to this moving state, we, we can group all the fragments corresponding to a stop together. Here that we can see in, in white. Um, and here uh, it's a tanker uh, stopped in the sea uh, before a trip that start uh, that start after. And we actually we define a course as a travel between two significant stops. Um, we can use the same process uh, to group all the fragment of a course to sing to create a, a single course uh, fragment, and uh, we can then visualize and distinguish the separated travel of the vessel and uh, and explore their distance and, uh, and duration or mean speed. Um, we we now also know their origin and uh, destination uh, here represented by uh, by green and and red points. And once we have the origin and destination, um, we can enrich the courses with um, the name of these locations. Uh, we use a service to, to get the country uh, as and the port name, which allow to, to select uh, the flux that matters. If we select the port of Kiel in Germany, for example, uh, we can instantaneously select all the travels that leave the port and uh, and analyze their, their trajectories and, uh, and destination. Uh, here we have the all these travels aggregated, but uh, we can uh, we can also visualize uh, the real tracks uh, of the selected vessels. Um, then to recap, uh, Alas ProCaml is an open source framework, very complementary to, to Alas exploration. And uh, the process of the data, the, uh, the processing of the data allows much more complete understanding of, uh, of the vessel fluxes. Um, we have seen that activities can be observed directly uh, in Alas by looking at the tracks, but, uh, but the vessel activities can also be automatically detected uh, from vessel movements thanks to, to machine learning.
Uh, machine learning models can can be used to recognize pattern uh, within the moving object data uh, and to recognize uh, vessel's behavior. Uh, supervised classification techniques can be used to train the model on on identified patterns, and uh, and the model can then recognize this pattern on uh, on new data. But it requires um, a training set containing the data annotated with the patterns. And the quality of the model prediction strongly depends on the quantity and diversity of this annotated data. Um, but this, this training set creation can be, uh, can be really time consuming and it requires uh, tools to, to visualize data and to recognize the patterns. Uh, we'll see together how how oh, Alas um, can help for this training set uh, creation and on uh, how it can integrate, uh, it can be integrated into the, the machine learning model uh, process creation. Um, let's consider uh, one pattern, the, the fishing activity. And uh, actually, there are different kinds of uh, fishing vessels with their own strategy. And it can be trawler, signer, longliner, drifter. And then knowing where and when the, these vessels are actually fishing can help to, to better understand activities and uh, regulate overfishing, for example. Um, the fishing activity of a vessel, it can be derived from its move. And uh, when we select the fishing vessel tracks, uh, we actually observe the different, uh, different strategies. Um, we observe kind of zigzag with homogeneous speed. Uh, with our last, we can quickly visualize these tracks. And let's assume we are a fishing expert. We can finally select the part of trajectory uh, where the vessel is actually fishing and where it's only, uh, it's only moving. And once the pattern is selected, uh, a tagging system in Arlas allows to, to annotate uh, the selected data or phishing or non-phishing, for example. And when, uh, when our training set is uh, in satisfying, uh, we can download the enriched data as a CSV file uh, directly in the application or via an API. An API. And, um, and know that the training set is available as a CSV file, we can use uh, any classical tools to create uh, the machine learning models. Uh, we can use Scikit, TensorFlow. Uh, we can also use different language, uh, Python, Scala, R. And uh, we can try the models and evaluate their performance uh, according to several metrics, uh, such as uh, accuracy or recall. And, um, and this model classification result can be compared to according to these metrics um, in, in tools such as uh, MLflow. And here we can see that each line uh, represents an experiment. And, and these tools allow to, to link metrics uh, with input parameters. But uh, however, it's, it's also important to, to visualize the classification results on the real vessel track to, to understand where the model performs well and where it lacks uh, accuracy. Um, and the Alas Tagger API allows to tag the results and to directly explore it uh, in Alas. Uh, we can then directly uh, visualize uh, the prediction results uh, over the real tracks. And uh, we click see we quickly see where the model perform well, and uh, and we can finally analyze uh, the different uh, fishing area and period, and it can help uh, decision makers. Uh, here we have seen uh, a maritime application, but uh, all these tools uh, can be adapted to any kind of uh, a moving object uh, data. Then uh, to recap, we have seen that Alas Exploration is an open source uh, geoanalytic tool that, uh, that allow to, to explore massive IAS data set in an interactive uh, map, map application. Uh, and we have seen that this uh, exploration can be enriched with, by Alas ProCaml, which is also an open source framework uh, based on Scala Spark to, to process trajectories and to extract uh, maritime intelligence. And, uh, and finally, we can also use Alas Exploration Tagging System to, to create a training set and uh, facilitate the creation of, uh, of machine learning models, models to, to dive even a bit deeper in the, in the maritime activity detections. Then uh, we'd like to thank you very much for you, uh, your attention and uh, feel free to, to ask any question and don't hesitate to, to follow us or contact us for more information. Thank you.
thank you thank you really um great presentations uh, we have uh, some questions here let's put it uh, on the screen uh the first is if you do if you use sedona in your alas or scala spark implementation mm. Actually, actually, I'm not sure I understand the question. I, I could not answer. Uh, but uh, but you, I can uh, ask uh, one of our data engineer to, if we know this. But uh, okay. yeah, I could not answer. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you 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 show more uh, more of uh, tools in machine learning in the in the finish of the presentation. So I think the. Uh, the people can ask in you by this uh, you email for uh, asking about use of Sedona. So uh, the next uh, question is: Is can the tool be used to help detect the origin of oil leaks in the ocean? Uh, how did it happen in Brazil in 2029? Yeah. Um, actually, I think, um, I think it, it could be possible. Actually, it can be applied to any moving object data. Then if you, if you have the evolution of, uh, of the oil leaks, um, maybe, uh, maybe it could, it, it could be visualized in our last, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, in any case, uh, it could be visualized in RLAS, but we could also process it as a moving object uh, data if, uh, if the, um, actually, if the oil uh, leaks is, uh, is seen as an object, then we'll not directly, uh, directly extract it from, uh, from the satellite image. But if you do this work, uh, it could be followed with such tools. Yeah. Okay. Um some questions uh here uh the people say awesome talk and uh, how can i run this tag and explore the, the the code uh you can find it on on github uh on alas project um and the st actually you can uh, it will be explained how to to deploy all the stacks it's only uh, open source uh, open source tools and uh and the alas procml uh, project is also uh, also now available as, uh, as open source and you can find it on on github uh, too i could share the link uh, if you want uh, specifically but i think you should find it quite easily okay uh, the next question is, uh, does one vessel one have one pair of origin and destination? Mm, actually, actually, no, if uh, it depends on the period you are, you are studying, but if it's a long period, um, actually, if the vessel move between ports, uh, we will uh, identify all the different, uh, the different travels and uh, we will have uh, different uh, pairs of origin destinations. And we will really separate them, and we will be able to identify uh, the time traveling and uh, the average speeds and different indicators like this. Okay. Uh, the second, uh, the next question uh, is divided in two because it's too big. But uh, I, I think I can show bottom. Okay. Is now uh, is hate of change data explicitly include the IS, IMS uh or not always available to re reliable i uh, for example velocity vector speed and heading uh. yeah. yeah yeah it's it's part of the is of the is data um the, there is a speed over ground uh, of the vessel there is uh, edging and also the course over ground uh and it's part of is uh, is data and we can also recompute it um, in IS, it's this, uh, these data are quite um, quite reliable. Even as there, are, there can be some some problems, but we can also recompute it from the from the vessel uh, the vessel locations uh, to recompute the speed and uh, to compare also if uh, if the sensors are, are really reliable, it can be used to it too. 
Okay, uh, I see that in chat uh, some people is sharing the GitHub and uh, tutorials. Nice. So we have uh, next questions, uh, new questions. Can we adapt the pipelines toward the moving objects? Yes, absolutely. It's done for this. Actually, here we we just uh, used IES data uh, as an example and to to illustrate uh, the process. But uh, but actually, uh, any moving object, it's uh, it's only an object ID, uh, location, uh, timestamps, and with with uh, at least only this uh, this information, uh, we can uh, we can process it and we can uh, recompute uh, the dynamics of the vessel. We can uh, we can apply uh, filtering. We can process it. And um, and what's nice is that as it's based on a f on the Spark uh, framework, uh, we can uh, deploy it on cluster to to apply it to big uh, big amount of data. Okay, we have five minutes and three questions to uh, no, it's for for last. <laughs> so, uh, how represented is your data? Like, what is the percentage of all data? Um, of all the data, uh, actually, we display. We can display all uh, all the data. Like uh, we uh, we download uh, we downloaded the IES data from the Danish maritime authorities, and uh, for example, each there is uh, one file for each day, and we process it. Um, then after we we'll, uh, we we can display uh, uh, the entire the entire data, the entire process data. I'm not sure I understand the question okay. uh, did you look at the mobility DB for possible options um, I didn't uh, I didn't use it uh, but uh, but maybe there are kind of uh, similar features that we can uh, we can have also in mobility DB yeah okay uh, how will you handle misconfigured timestamp in the IAS data? Um, the, uh, there are different. Uh, I'm not sure what you what uh, what is your point about misconfigured data. Uh, actually, mo most of IAS data uh, timestamp uh, follow a pattern. Uh, we can uh, we can um, we can have uh, different patterns to uh, if uh, if we find uh, different uh, different uh, uh, timestamp patterns within the data we can adapt it uh, and also we we have the notion when there are gaps um, when when there are gaps in data we we handle it we identify it and uh, for example sometimes uh, the timestamp is um, like the, there is a kind of permutation uh, between uh, between timestamp and there is one location which is uh, uh, which was emitted uh, maybe uh, two uh, two uh, two days ago uh, that appear quite easy. it's it's quite far and we identify it uh, as outlier and we we clean it okay and the last question for finish the presentation is uh, what yeah. is the mean of Arles? Um, actually, uh, Arlas is a is a mountain in um, in the Pyrenees in south of France, uh, close to the the, splay, the Spain border. <laughs> okay. And uh, some of the founder of the of our company uh, come from the, this area, and uh, that's why they they choose it. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you, Willy. Uh, we, the time is up. We can cover it all the time the presentation. Thanks for, for the thank presentation. Thank you very much, Joel, and for your question. Okay, uh, if you have uh, any questions to Willy, uh, send an email. Uh, this is on the screen, the, mm -hmm. the address and mail of the Willy. So thanks, and we'll see you soon in the social gathering in Phosphate GIS map of the Buenos Aires. Thank yes, you. Thanks to all. Bye.